Good afternoon. It's been a little bit busy getting set up. Let's just take a minute to settle ourselves. Take a couple of deep breaths and just enter into the time of, of praise and worship of God. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent. It's the Sunday of love. So let's just take a minute and rest in God's love. It's our tradition at Holy Spirit Anglican. Normally we start church at 10.02, because in Luke 10.02 it says pray, pray for the harvest. Um, and so we've been praying for church planters. It is 109, which I'm sure has some scriptural verse somewhere. <laughs> so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for the church plant in Coast Falls, Idaho, St. David. We pray, Lord, that you'd be with them, that you would bless them during this time. May they continue to grow. May they find ways to reach out to the community and to show God's love and his blessing. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to actually start with the lighting of the Advent wreath, and then we will do the opening hymn. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ, the candle of peace, remembering God's promise of a peaceful world, and the candle of joy, remembering the spirit within us who brings joy. Today we light the fourth candle as we continue our Advent journey together. This is the candle of love. Throughout the season of Advent, we've been drawn more and more into love with Jesus. Mm -hmm. The call of the readings and of our liturgy has been to love Christ more deeply. Moreover, we are called to exhibit this love to those around us so that we might be obedient witnesses of Jesus Christ. Today, in, ex in expectation, we light the candle of love. 1 John 4, 9 through 11 tells us, In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Let us pray together. God of love, whose love was so great that you came down to live as one of us, May we know afresh what it is to love you with all our being. May our love be the voice of loving obedience. Let it be to me according to your word. In our world, many do not know your love. Let us, your church, share anew your love for all who do not know or desire your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Our opening hymn is O Come Divine Messiah. <laughs>
always of your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed the judges of my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares that you, to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with all of your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. When he commits in inequity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the sons of men. But my steadfast love will not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with these, all these words, in accordance with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. at the half verse. Lord, remember David and all his trouble. How he swore unto the Lord and vowed a vow unto the Almighty God of Jacob. I will not come within the tabernacle of my house nor climb up into my bed. I will not allow my eyes to sheep nor sleep nor my eyelids to slumber. Neither the temples of my head to take any rest. Until I find a place for the temple of the Lord, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Lo, we heard of the ark of Ephrath, and found it in the wood. We will go into his tabernacle, and fall low on our knees before his footstool. Arise, O God, into your resting place, you are the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints sing with joyfulness. For your servant David's sake, turn not away the presence of your anointed. The Lord has made a faithful oath unto David, and he shall not shrink from him. Of the fruit of your body shall I set upon your throne. If your children will keep my covenant and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their children also shall sit upon your throne forever. For the Lord has chosen Zion to be a habitation for himself. He has long for This shall be my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have a delight therein. I will bless their, her provisions with increase. And will satisfy her poor with bread. I will deck her priests with health. And her saints shall rejoice in the same. There shall I make a horn, the horn of David to flourish. I have prepared a lantern for my anointing. As for his enemies, I shall clothe them with shame, but the upon myself will the Lord have no I dwell, for I have the light there. Sorry. <laughs> The epistle reading is Romans 16, 25 through 27. <coughs> now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for the ages, but now has been disclosed 
through the prophetic writings that have been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, be glory forevermore, through Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Our gospel hymn is the angel Gabriel from heaven came, the first two verses. <laughs> Thank you. 
Give him strength and courage and give him the words that you want us to hear. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. spend our time uh, this afternoon in Luke, kind of hard not to, uh, right before Christmas. And the, the challenge sometimes with these scriptures, particularly the, the Christmas scriptures, is that we think we know them. And so we just have a tendency to kind of gloss over the story, well, we've heard that, I, I got it, let's move on. And, and there's a lot really in just this little scriptures that we've spoken about, that we read about today, and we're going to go through them verse by verse, and then we're going to kind of hit maybe a few highlights that I'd like to point out to you. So it starts out in the sixth month. The sixth month of what? Well, it's the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. Okay, and we know that from the verses beforehand. So in the sixth month, here comes the angel Gabriel again, sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. We've just heard... We kind of skipped over it, but we just heard in the scripture about the angel Gabriel coming to, um, to Zechariah and foretelling the birth of John the Baptist. And it's interesting that there's this huge difference between how this announcement of John the Baptist occurs and how the announcement of Jesus occurs. When Gabriel comes to Zechariah, number one, he's coming to a man. Number two, he's coming to a priest. Number three, he meets him in the Holy of Holies. And it's in Jerusalem. When Gabriel comes to Mary, she's a young girl. The age for betrothal was basically when you hit puberty. We don't know where she was, but I doubt it was in the Holy of Holies. And she was in a little town called Nazareth. Later on in the Gospels, we hear about Nazareth. We hear someone say, Nazareth, what good can come from Nazareth? And that's kind of how it was looked at in those days. So, so on the one hand, we have John the Baptist in Jerusalem, where you would expect a Savior and a Messiah to be born, with a pronouncement to the religious leaders of the time. And on the other hand, Jesus, the announcement of Jesus comes to, to a young lady who at the time was probably doing chores around the house in this backwater town. There couldn't be a bigger difference between those two. And it points to the humility of Jesus. And we'll come back to that. It talks about a virgin, and, and it's interesting that the virgin is basically mentioned three times. This is the first time. And that she was betrothed to a man of Joseph, of the house of David. And again, very important because we knew that the Messiah was going to come from the house of David. We just heard that in 2 Samuel, right? And so here's this idea that, that something big is going to happen. And here's the second time. And the virgin's name was Mary. So Luke is, kind of, Luke, and remember, Luke is a doctor, right? Luke pays attention to medical kind of things. He really does. There's more healings in Luke and things like that. And so the fact that, that Luke is kind of emphasizing this virgin thing, if I were a doctor, well, I am a doctor. Uh, if, <laughs> if somebody came up to me and started talking about this immaculate conception and a birth to a virgin, I would be stressing the fact that it was a virgin. And he came to her, the, the angel, and he said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. Now, I love that. My other favorite greeting is, is uh, to, um, I'm, I'm going to blank on his name now. Um, Gideon, thank you. Gideon, hail mighty man of God when he's hiding in a threshing floor. The, the idea that God calls us by a name, not just our given name, but, but by this, this name 
O mighty man of God, O favored one. That's a tricky one. What does that mean? I spent a lot of time just meditating over that and thinking about that. And, and for one thing, when you look at, at the, the grammar of it, it's already happened. Greetings, O one who has been blessed. Favor. Some of the root words there are, are the idea of grace. And so here's this, this I'm, I'm favored because I'm blessed, or I'm, 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 uh, I have God's favor, I have God's grace. And the Lord is with me, which also is, is being favored. Well, Mary, she's, she's greatly troubled with this saying, and she tries to discern what sort of greeting this ought to be. I, I would be too. You know, greetings, so highly favored one. What do you want? <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? She's, she's, she's trying to figure that out. How, how am I blessed? I'm a, I'm a 13-year-old girl. What, what makes me so favored of the Lord? The angel says to her, do not be afraid, Mary. Time and time again, we hear that. For you have found favor with God. Again, this idea that, that she has found favor, that there's some kind of special grace or blessing upon her. She doesn't know what yet. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Wow. I mean, can you think about that for a minute. You're, you're a 13 year old girl. First of all, there's an angel. That's pretty big. I mean, really, think about that. You're, you're I don't know, whatever she was doing. You're washing the clothes, you're cooking lunch. Boom. There's an angel. And then he greets you as being favored by God. And then he tells you you're going to get pregnant. And not only that, but the baby that you bear is going to be the Messiah and the King of Israel forever. Well, that's highly favored. But think about the, the, the magnanimity of that. I mean, I can't grasp that, and I'm 57. Can you imagine what would have been going through her mind at that time? And she says, how will this be? Since I'm a virgin. And it's interesting, that's the third virgin, but it's actually, she says, I haven't known a man. And that's kind of important, actually, because people try to get around this whole immaculate conception thing. Well, well the word virgin in the Greek can also mean young lady. That's true, but the word in the Greek that says, I haven't known a man, kind of means that. She was a virgin. And then the angel replies to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. There's this idea of divine conception. We say that every Sunday in, in, the, uh, in the Creed, right? Conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. We, we affirm that every Sunday, that there's this idea that Jesus was conceived divinely. What does that mean? I have no idea. Other than the fact that God was involved in this, and that, and that Jesus was fully God, and he was fully man, and it's a mystery that we should rejoice in, because it meant that God was with us. And again, here's this idea that he is holy. He's the son of God. This isn't just another baby. This is the idea that, that she is, is going to have the Messiah. And again, I, I don't know about you, but I would have been kind of wondering about this. And the angel says basically says there's going to be a sign 
And, and your, your relative Elizabeth, your aunt, in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who has been called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. I think if, there, there's so many lines in these scriptures that we, we tend to pick out. And obviously one of them is, let it be to me according to your word. But, but I think just as, as important for that is that nothing will be impossible with God. In fact, I don't think you can say, let it be for me according to your word without having nothing is impossible for our God. You need to have that. That faith and that knowledge that God is in control, that in the midst of everything that's going on in our world, God is in control and that nothing is impossible for him. And Mary's response to that is, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Some, some Bibles translate it handmaiden. It's, it's the female slave. I am the female servant of the Lord. Those, those servants didn't have options, really. They, they did what their master told them to do. And she says, Let it be to me according to your word. I think a, a good way, at least for me to think about that, is let it happen to me according to your word. Let whatever you've got planned for me happen. That's a huge prayer. It's a huge thing to say to God. I don't know about you, but, but I, I tend to get nervous when I say things like that. Because, well, what if, what if God wants me to do something that I don't want to do? What if God wants me to, I don't know, move to Billings or something? God is a God of love. He is a God who is in control. He is a God with whom nothing is impossible. And he's going to stretch you, boy. There's no doubt about it. So, so let's look at this a little bit just in terms of, of some things. First of all, Jesus. Throughout this scripture, we hear about the humility of Jesus. The announcement was humble. There was no, no big uh, fanfare. There were no trumpets. The rulers didn't know about it. The religious leaders didn't know about it. A little girl, young lady in a backwoods town knew about it. The, 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 even the first instance of Jesus emptying himself and becoming a servant for us. He had a humble birth. We'll be talking about that on Thursday. He led a humble life. He, he had a scandalous death. Throughout his life, Jesus shows us that he is humble. The second thing we read through this is that Jesus is the Messiah, that he's the king, and that his reign is eternal. Throughout Advent, we've been talking about the second coming, that we wait for that. We wait for the time that our Messiah and our king comes to us. We also learn that he's got a royal lineage. We heard that in Samuel. We hear that he's divine, that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And that he's God's son. But I think that one of the interesting characters is Mary. Mary starts off being unaware. She had no clue that something was going to happen that day. She didn't wake up thinking, today's the day that an angel is going to come and visit me. She was unaware of what was going to happen. She hadn't prayed about it. Elizabeth had prayed about it. She had prayed that she would have a son. So that was an answer to her prayer. Mary I hadn't tried anything to the best of our knowledge. And, and suddenly this angel comes and she goes from being unaware to being troubled and pondering, what is, what is the meaning of this? And then she goes to questioning, how is this going to be? And then she goes to unreserved acceptance and readiness. I am ready to do whatever it is that you have in mind for me to do. What did Mary bring to the table in this? Just a willingness, a faithfulness, that's it. She had no, nothing to recommend her as being the mother of God. 
except your willingness. And that's a willingness of, of hearts. It's easy to do something when we will it in our heart. Oh, I feel sorry for this person, or I feel compassion for this person. I'm going to do something. It's a lot harder when it's just a brain thing. Well, I know I should do something. I kind of believe that, that Mary had both of those, a heart and a brain, that, that allowed her to, to do this. And it changed her life. I don't think that Mary, if you'd have asked her, what is your, what is your plan for 10 years out, would have come up with anything that happens to her. Which brings us to this idea of being highly favored. Blessed. Receiving grace. The word that, that the Orthodox Church uses is theotokos, the God-bearer. Full of grace. And yet, what's ahead of her? Scandal? Oh, here's this lady who's not quite married yet and she's pregnant. Having to run away to Egypt because Herod's after you. Watching your son do things that you don't necessarily understand and watching people slowly turn against him. Watching your son be crucified. That's highly favored. Puts a different spin on it, doesn't it? The idea that God's grace, we can be full of God's grace, that doesn't mean that our life is going to be hunky-dory for the rest of the time. In fact, it might be harder in the short term, but not in the long term. Mary was full of grace, because she got to be a part of Jesus' mission. Brothers and sisters, I got news for you. We are full of grace. Because we are part of Jesus' mission. It is not going to be easy. We are going to be uncomfortable. Because we're going to have to talk to people about Jesus. Mary was more uncomfortable because she was pregnant. Some of you women understand that. If she can be uncomfortable burying Jesus, we can be uncomfortable talking about him. It takes courage. It takes faith. It takes the ability to say, I am your servant, Lord. Let it happen to me according to your will. So here's my challenge to you, brothers and sisters. I pray that, that in, the, in the next few days to come, as we... As we finish up Advent and we start looking towards Christmas and celebrating Christmas, that you think about praying that prayer. you got to mean it. takes a lot of courage. takes a lot of faith. But we've gone through this season of Advent, of hope, of peace, of joy, of love. All of that flows from God. And when we have that in the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, we can do things because nothing is impossible with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the example that we have through Mary and through your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that we can learn about humility, that we can learn about conviction, that we can learn about full devotion to you and to your will. Lord, we pray that you would equip us with those same things, not for our own glory, Lord, but for yours. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Through him, 
all things were made. For us and for our salvation, you came down from heaven. With the incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified with the conscious heart. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who believes in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, who live for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the whole world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly ask you mercifully to receive our prayers. Inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the way of righteousness. And so guide and direct their leaders, especially Donald, our president, that with your people we may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Foley, our Archbishop, Keith, our Bishop, John, our priest, Gretchen, our deacon, that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your true and life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people give your heavenly grace especially to this congregation, that with reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive your holy word and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world, and strengthen us to fulfill your great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that you have commanded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care, keeping hold of men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, and all first responders. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations, and give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence, wherever they may be. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and sustain all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Jennifer, Leslie, Aaron, Caitlin, Doris, Karen, and Valerie, Michelle and Ann, baby Keisha, Judy, Tammy, and Chris, Luke, Ann, Bishop Keith, Julie, Stan, Tim, and Alba, for Jim, Ava and Jim, Marlene, Glenn, Leanne, Duncan, Bert, Gretchen, Betty, Carla, Margie, Larry, and Keisha in her study, and those you now name. Jim in his study. Pray for those who are traveling today to be here for Jim and Larry. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember before you all servants who departed this life with 
in your faith and spirit, especially Nancy, Joe, that the will for them may be fulfilled. And we ask you to give us grace to follow the example of all your saints that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess, humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker and judge of us all, we acknowledge and repent of our many sins and offenses, which we have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your righteous anger against us. We are deeply sorry for these transgressions, and the burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may evermore serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Please greet one another from afar and high online. This morning is our lesson day with Rosie. Thank you. 
bottom of page 9. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is right. Our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great glory to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, and forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise and glory is yours, O God, our Heavenly Father. For in your tender mercy, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He may bear, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, offering, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. So now, O most merciful Father, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine that we, receiving them according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his passion and death, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, According to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, celebrate and make here before your divine majesty with these holy gifts the memorial your Son commanded us to make, remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. And we earnestly desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, asking you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, that we and your whole church may attain forgiveness of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. Together. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Please be seated. All baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion with us today. If you would prefer not to receive, um, we'd still encourage you to come forward. You can place your arms across your chest. Uh, and I'll know to give you a prayer or blessing. Uh, if you choose to stay where you are, that's fine as well. Uh, but we long for the day when you might love the Jesus that we love and you are able to partake in the family meal of which we are about to partake. <laughs>
And we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all the good works that you have prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, just a few quick announcements. Um, once the service is concluded, um, we'll take just like a five, ten minute break or so. Um, to kind of get reshuffled, and then we will uh, start the remembrance for Nancy. Um, are there any uh, birthdays or anniversaries besides Jesus? <laughs> Anybody traveling? Yeah. You're traveling. Oh, yeah. That's right, you guys are going yeah. somewhere too. Okay, and Leanne, yeah, awesome. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those that are traveling, we pray that you would be with them as they go on the highways, the byways, and the airways. We pray that you would keep them safe, guard them against any illness or injury. We pray that you would give them a blessed time as they travel. Let them find new opportunities to enjoy your creation and to share the blessing of Jesus Christ. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Any other announcements for the good of the order? So Christmas Eve service here, Thursday, 8 o'clock. Christmas Day service, Friday, here, 10 o'clock. And then Sunday, regular service at Zimmerman at 10 o'clock. Awesome. Please stand for our closing hymn, Christ Will Come Again.